Hey there, in this recording, I'm going to describe what are called the advanced formulas of pi space. Um, in, a pre in previous lectures um, on the YouTube videos that I have, I've described um, how movement in pi space is seen as just the atom getting smaller. Um, I've shown how the Pythagorean theorem is seen as how you subtract one area from an observer sphere's area and I've shown how you can uh, then apply that to the Pythagorean or to the Lorentz Fitzgerald transformation. Now moving one step ahead of just looking at the way the formula currently works in pi space it's possible to derive the Lorentz Fitzgerald transformation um, independently of using the mechanism that was used by um, in the Einstein work using rods and um, rods and and clocks um, so let's just understand how we can describe how we can define it and derive it in using the advanced approach which is just thinking purely in terms of spheres losing area so so the first thing to understand is that um, is that there's two there's two um, uh, kinds of ways to see a sphere in pi space. There's the observer uh, sphere, which is the stationary, relatively stationary position, and then there's the relative moving uh, position relative to the to the stationary observer. And in the way it works in pi space is we we what we do is we take a look at a, um, a, a sphere shrinking and then a sphere gain getting bigger. So there's two cases: a sphere can get bigger or um, a sphere can get smaller. So we see velocity as an, as an area that gets bigger. So if you think about velocity in pi space, you just all you need to think is there is an area loss which is growing. And, uh, and if you just think about the velocity component. So the way we, the way we formulate this in, in pi space is pretty simple. Uh, we think of sine, which starts at zero and goes to pi over two, uh, so it's getting bigger. And uh, v over c is the, the the percentage of growth relative to the observer. So we can formalize that idea in a formula here, which is that a velocity, uh, a traditional velocity, can be seen as the sine of the arc sine of v over c. Now. Let me just try and explain that to you. So sine is just about something getting larger, okay? And the range of the of the growth is from zero to pi over two. Now, when we talk in traditional physics about the speed of light, we, we always say from zero to one. Um, and by that, um, um, one equals the... Uh, one equals uh, the speed of light, so it's zero to c or zero to one, the standard units as they're called. So, so v over c can represent zero to one. Uh, so arc sine uh, then changes it from from zero to one to zero to pi over two. So that's the range of um, of, of values um, as you can go from zero to pi over two. So if we put that into this formula. Uh, you can see the pi space velocity is the sine of the arc sine of v over c. Sine and arc sine cancel, and you get v over c, which is which is the way it works, which is um, which is the way that the velocity currently works in physics, and that's that's how you describe it. That's the fully qualified version of velocity in the advanced formulas. So it's it's the way we use it. It's the way New Newton defined it, and it's the way Einstein defined it. Now we move on to the idea of um, we move on to the idea um, of um, of uh, of the compression of an object. So we have this idea in physics that there's this special case uh, which is called the Lorentz Fitzgerald transformation, and it's called special. You know, it's special relativity. And, and I think that the 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 thing about special relativity is is the na the name in itself is a little bit misleading in that it's it's not really special it's actually a very general principle about what happens to an atom in the in the pi space theory it's not special at all it's actually very fundamental it's very 
very it's a very important principle and that is it, it is that when 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 something moves as i've already shown the area loss grows uh, sine arc sine v over c which gives you v over c but there's also the more important component which is we measure everything in terms of the observer right so so as the as the um as the the area uh, loss increases then the observer sphere relative to the to the area loss it shrinks now i've already shown that excuse me that the one uh, that the square root of one minus sphere over c squared is actually a pythagorean theorem, uh, theorem where you're subtracting one area from another but there is a more elegant way to describe that right in pi space the advanced formulas part and that is that it's just about compression and the, the rule of thumb in, in pi space is uh, cos, cos is, represents compression so compression by compression I mean area loss um, so if we think of the observer shrinking uh, relative to the original observer uh, due to area loss uh, from movement, the way we the way we describe that in in pi space is it's the cos of the arc sine v over c. Again, uh, v over c has a range of zero to one. Uh, cos doesn't have a range of zero to one. It has a range of zero to pi over two. So we it's the cos of the arc sine v over c. Now, if you go into Mathematica and you say simplify cos arc sine v over c, the answer that you get is the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now, the thing is that I think, personally, this is a more intuitive way to understand the the um, the Lorentz Fitzgerald transformation because it's just about this um, observer sphere losing uh, area and it becomes relatively this size. The units of this object, uh, this value, are, are uh, c squared, uh, in case anybody's wondering. I'll talk about that later. So basically, the cos of arc sine v over c is analogous to square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So it's the same thing. It's actually a different formulation, but it's the same thing, right? So um, this is how pi space ties in with it. So uh, again, you come to the idea that this value, you multiply a property such as time or, or length uh, to it, and, and then you get the actual relative value. Um, so, so what's interesting about this interpretation of of, of uh, relativistic physics is that um, that you can then begin to think of an area loss as a sort of a degree. You can re you can relate it to an uh, to an angle, yeah, uh, and that is to say that um, as time progresses um, and you're losing area, uh, suddenly you're into trig. You know, you're, you've jumped out of special relativity and you're into trig. You know, this is the stuff you learn in high school or, or whatever school you go to. And then you think of the Pythagorean theorem, that you can represent the Pythagorean theorem as just something which shows a, 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 a one area growing, a, one area representing loss, and its cos and its sine. And then this is the, uh, the stationary observer here, the hypotenuse which is the and then this is the this is just the way to to do it so the hypotenuse is the newtonian observer uh the growing pie shell is the area loss due to velocity and the shrinking part is the relativistic observer and that is um that is the lorentz fitzgerald transformation seen in pie space and then uh just finally um if you just go to uh if you just plug these values into a calculator, um, you can pretty much see it's pretty much the same values you'll get back. Um, so that's the formula for um, uh, that's the formula for the Lorentz Fitzgerald transformation in pi space in what I call the advanced formulas, and that is taking the theory and then creating new formulas. So it's uh, just to finally say it, it's the cos of the arc sine v over c. Uh, I have a whole bunch of other formulas in the document up on my website, but I just wanted to describe uh, just that one example because it's very fundamental, and I'm hoping the the one thing that PySpace may help with is uh, even if you prefer to use the original formulas, 
maybe it, it just adds a level of intuition to why what the formula means you can use this one if you want I think I mean uh, it's up to the individual but this is the theory cos arc sine v over c sine arc sine v over c for for regular movement which just simplifies to v over c that's it thanks for listening